Hi, I'm Patty. Hi. So I'm here. I'm from Calus. I'm a business analyst. Uh, most of the time, I am an accessibility specialist. So, yeah, today I'm gonna talk about my motivations in working in web accessibility. So just um, just a question before my presentation is that: Is there anyone who is like unfamiliar with web accessibilities or who've never heard of it before? Raise your hand. So you you sort of like having some sort of knowledge about it, right? So is there anyone who like currently an accessibility specialist or working in this areas or working with accessibility specialists to create your content? So more of like having the knowledge but not really like working and so I'm just like I just wanna know. Okay, cool. Cool. So this whole talk is about me because you know I'm important. Um uh, so I graduated at Victoria University and I was majoring in marketing and business system. So as you can tell, I have no like technical background or anything like that at all. Um, and yeah, so like every other folks after graduation was like, okay, what's next? I don't know. Uh, so I just gonna find a job because that's what everyone's doing, right? You need a job. So I'm just finding a job, trying to be an adult. And I was like, okay, so what What will be my goals? I'm not too sure. I might find a job and then I might hate my job and then I might switch another job and then I still hate it and then I'm gonna change to another job. So like, yeah, so as long as I can pay my bills, so that's the point, right? That was adult is like, it's boring. That's what I heard people said. And then I come across something called an accessibility internship here as Catalyst. And I was like, well, this is interesting. I don't really know much about it, but I find it very cool. Uh, we, was, we were not taught about it in uni. Uh, and I think that we actually should. We should get started on that. Um, and I was a tutor back in uni and I'm finding that this topic should be something that should be brought up in every um, tech class or any tech course is so important, but no one has really been talking about it. And um, yeah, there was something called the WCAG, which I came across. I usually just call it WCAG. Um, and it's the web web content accessibility guideline so it's a set of guidelines to um for government or for any kind of website to follow to meet the accessibility standard and i was like i was going to the interview and i just literally told my currently manager that i have no idea what this is and i have no experience in that i have no technical background but it's very interesting and she just came back to me and she just asked me that, so who do you want to be when you grow up? And I was like, wow, that's a really hard question because it's really hard. Um, and then I just say, I guess I just want to be helpful, I think, um, because I think after COVID and you know lockdown, all of that, all our goals are sort of like, you don't know if you can really follow through with that, with all the uncertainty and all of that. So I'm just gonna have like a very core value that I'm gonna follow and I'm gonna try my best to achieve it. So I'm saying that, yeah, I wanna be helpful. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna do it. And I hope that working in web accessibilities can help me achieving that goals of mine. Um, and yeah, I started doing my job and I love it. Oh, like the usual thing. <laughs> cool. You still interested? Yes. Okay, great. I can still talk about this. Oh, maybe it's my phone. Okay, thank you. This is great. This is history over here. Yeah, yeah. It's recorded too, so. Oh, I mean, you can keep it. Um, but. Yeah, so the more I learn about my job, the more I find it very meaningful. And I work with a, a 
a person who is blind when I started doing my job. And I just reckon that people actually do care about it. And I'm actually helping, helping solving real life problems. Um, I thought that at first people just doing this because they're, they're afraid to get sued. They're afraid that they're going to get someone to find them like $10,000 every day. It's actually how it's being fined, like by days, not just by um, weeks or months. So if your website is inaccessible in some countries, you can get fined up to like 100 grand or 10 grand per day. So at that point, you might just want to shut down your website. Anyway, and then I come... I became a trainer and I'm doing training for accessibility and I teach people how to make their website accessible. And at the end of every training, I was just trying to tell people that congratulations, you're actually help making the world a better place because you're learning how to remove barriers for people to get access to your website. You're trying to provide people information, which previously they can't, they have no way to get access to it. So yeah, you're being helpful and I'm being helpful too. And I'm thinking about the future generation. I know I'm too young to talk about this, but I actually think that we should think about them. Um, I have a colleague whose son is blind and he was talking about how he he find it very difficult for his son when they're, he is school. And it's just like there's a lot of things happening around this kid's world and we want I want him me personally want him to be prepared in life later on I want him to grow up and then get access to information I want him to learn more and I think that the internet was such a great invention and we should be able to let everyone to get access to it and then I do a lot of auditing and the more I audit, the more I try using as a technologies, I empathize more with my user. And I just figure out that a lot of websites are so inaccessible that a person who have more disability, the, a person who might have neurological challenges, a person who is blind, they have no way to get access to those information. Just imagine if a website is not keyboard accessible, how can a keyboard only user use it? Um, if a website that have a modal pops up um, at the beginning of it and there's no way for you to close it Imagine how annoying that is and these people have to face that every single day in their life And I think that it's time for us to fix that and care about it And actually accessibility is about really small implementation implementation that can make a really big change for example page title how like the way you um, doing your page title, the way you're creating it is really important. You just need to have a clearer wordings and things like that. It really help people using native HTML because for accessibility, good code is basically accessible code. There's just only a very marginal difference between when testing between browser and I figure that if you're using as much native HTML as you can possible, and if you're just, just like doing good practice in coding, you're making your code accessible. You don't have to do much. And think beyond the WCAX and the law, and think about user, the real people that you're helping. Um, that's what we were taught at a school. We were taught about UX, we were taught about personas, we're talking about a Karen who's like shopping, who's 22 and who love to buy fast fashion. But we're not talking about a Kevin who was blind, who was using keyboard and a screen reader to browse through website. We're not really talking about those people. So there is like a very large group that we're missing. And yeah, think about our user. The reason why at the beginning we have a website is that we want our information to be accessible, right? We want people to not have to ring out customer services asking a bunch of questions and asking us that, hey, like, what does this mean? Why do you don't provide us on your website? So be making a website is inaccessible is like counteract to that, right? You're, you're basically telling people that, hey, I'm preventing you from getting this information. You have to go to another route. 
and that to me is bad. It's just it's just bad. And yeah. Um so every day when I go to work, I'm not just thinking that hey, it's a new day. I'm just going to work and do my job. I'm thinking that I'm helping people to have a better experience on the web by reducing the barriers. And if the more that people can realize about these problems, the more I can spread the awareness about this, the more you guys or anyone would be like, hey, this is an important thing. We need to get started about it or at least have some conversation about this afterward. And that is for me today. Um, I didn't talk a lot of technical stuff today because I think you can find those talks a lot online or you can watch it or you can learn about it. But there's just like a personal touch on this thing, which I think is also important because um, accessibility means different things to different people and to me is is very meaningful personally. And yeah, you can reach out to me via my email, pattyyoung at callis.net.nz, or you can reach out to our team at callis, accessibility team at callis.net.nz. Great. Thank you. Any question? Yep. Yeah, so um, should I repeat the question? So the question is that, um, how was the experience of a blind person on the web? And I must say it's a, it's a struggle. So for a blind person, a mouse doesn't mean anything to them. Um, they're using keyboard and they're using screen reader. So they're just having um, a device that, or an extension or an application that read out loud whenever they're going through um, an uh, a website. And it's a very big struggle. He was my trainer and I saw him just going through the web and it was such a pain because at some point he was like, I think I'm stuck. Do you know where I am? Do you know which link I'm on? I'm not too sure anymore. So he need to help, need to have help from other people to get through those barriers in order to continue with it. So um, his user journey, most of the time got stuck in um, more of like commercial website, I reckon, especially like online shopping. It's a very big difficulties for him. Um, in like the real world, it's already hard for him to go shopping, but even shopping online is hard, is is really unacceptable. He, I remember someone told me that he ordered some grapes and it turned out he's ordered a box of wine. And he was like, oh, I really don't want any wine, but these just showed up at my door, so I guess I'm gonna have some wine. But like, yeah, that's, that's what happened. Um, and you can actually, oh, <laughs> it's fine. Um, I can show you basically what, how a person they navigate through the web. So I'm just going to YouTube and they're using a lot of keyboard. So they can tab to a website. So when you're tabbing, you can see where your focus is, right? So currently I'm on library and the screen reader that we read out loud, like for example, news, link, live, link, fashion and beauty, link. And then if something that is a button, it will read out that like for example, get it now, button, or playlist, button, search, input text field, and things like that. So that's how a person who is blind navigating through the webs. Yeah, questioned. Um, so the question is that, do I have to learn how to use a screen reader to do my job, and yes. Um, but you, it's not like very hard actually. Most of the time I'm just focusing on like the simple keystroke like tab, um, enter key, space key, um, or arrow keys. 
So that is the main keystroke that I'm using when I'm doing a lot of audit. And it's actually not that hard because I mean, blind people, they've been using it and every blind people has been using it. So it's not, it's not that hard. You can learn how to do it very quick. Yep. And it's free. Screen readers are free. So you can just get it and testing it. Yep. Another question? Yeah, I was about to say, I might gonna just show you how to navigate through it. So the question is that, how to buy a box of flowers online? Yeah, input, yeah, it's really easy. Let, let me show you how to do it. Um, it will be good if we can have some demonstration. Okay. Your microphones you oh. keep talking. I'll see if I can pull up the screen reader here. Um, we can try. So we got something called, yeah, uh, password, uh, can we cancel? Oh, okay. Oh, no, we have it here. Yep. Screen reader. Screen reader, the screen reader reads displayed. Chromium panel. New tab. Google.com slash search underscore. The blocker, close push button, chromium pack, google it, search com, clear push button, search by voice push, google, google, sign in, map, shop, image, new, more tools, entry, stop, reset, feed, count, so. simple, countdown, nz, supermarket, find a supermarket near you, list with, me, one, c c COVID, leaving list, search entry, so when I tap into a, a search input field, it would take focus to that search input field and I can just start typing in and... Product toggle drop down push button. Shop now, li search entry flowers selected. Online supermarket, online grocery shopping and free recipes at countdown.co.nz, chromium frame. Online supermarket, online grocery shopping and free rec... So you can see that how annoying a screen reader can be sometimes, especially when a page is being coded, for example, like this. Because when you're looking at this page title over here, you can see that it's a very, very long page title and it doesn't really describe the page. So imagine if you're blind and I'm just like closing Online this. Online supermarket. Oh. You will not know like what this page is about, even though it's just like a loading screen because it's not reading it out loud. So something like that can be very annoying for a screen reader user. Yes, another question. Yeah, so at the moment we're focusing on making like one website that works for everybody. Do you think that that's something that maybe in the future we will try to develop um, different website layouts for different users? Mm. So like for example, for someone in the EU, screen reader. Online supermarket. Text, maybe, or like for small screen. Screen reader, toggle button, screen reader. Uh, the question is that um, we've been creating one website for everyone. So should we have like another accessible version of a website for people with disability? Uh, and the answer is that you don't need to. Um, it's because, again, in my talk, I said that accessible code um, is good code. So most of the time, people go out of their way and doing fancy stuff with a lot of interaction and with a lot of animation. And that's when things get inaccessible. So as long as you're making sure that you're having a good code, like using um, button elements for button, instead of using a div or span, a lot of custom controls, that one is like, it's already really helpful because um, native HTML, HTML5, and also the browser, they all assisting this like assistive technology. They've always been assisting technology, but it's just that if we're not doing our good practice is when things get screwed up. So you don't have to actually. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't thinking in terms of not being inclusive, but like one size fits all can be nice, but maybe something that is designed for a screen reader might be more ergonomic for people using screen readers as opposed to maybe the fastest. I, I think it's just yeah. more ergonomic. Yeah. Um, and it's very good yeah. for like the type of content that you want. So here it's going to be called an alternative. Mm -hmm. So you don't say it's accessible. Yeah. Yeah. 
how it goes up, but at the same time, we also have an extremely diverse demographic that sits in the middle. Oh, uh, yeah. So, Christina, point was really right about like accessibility is not about um, you screwing what you've done before and just like not doing it anymore, but it's more of like what are the alternative way for people to also use the same functionality. Yeah, and for example, like maps, there is like no way a blind user would find a map that is that useful. So something can be useful for them is like a list of address and you have description of what that place can be like. So that is very helpful. And also just another thing about WCAG is that there are a groups of people from different places in the world writing it. But again, um, there are not enough, like I don't think there's not enough money being put into that. And it's not, be, it's not growing as much as the technology. So sometimes technologies and the design that go really further away and WCAG has been written since like the 2000 or something like that. And there's still some rules that might not be applicable um, or relevant anymore. So that's when we need to use our mind to think about the user and finding alternative way to create the experience for them instead of just like sticking to the rules. Yeah. Questioned. Okay, that's a good question. So the question is that, what does my accessibility team work like? So I have a team lead, um, manager, and also me who's working with uh, within the team, and we also have some tester who also helping us. Um, we work with so our team. What we're trying to do, we're trying to embed accessibility across the company. So we provide consultancy, we provide auditing. And yeah, we work really close with each other. We always reviewing the rules, the laws, and see looking for best practice, and also talk to people and providing training. We try to get as much um, provide as much training for internal as possible, so that um, our people will have the knowledge of make like starting to make accessibility a thing at the beginning instead of like waiting it down the line. Does that answer your question? Okay, great. Yeah. So yeah, start at the beginning and at the end you don't have to worry about fixing a whole system of a legacy system. We've been through that, we've auditing that and it's such a pain to see a lot of things are that very inaccessible that it being developed over 5 years. So Any question? No? Okay, great. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much.